I definitely Look at what she's doing. She's a little tactile access hole. <laughs> Good old T A H. Between Jamie Lee Curtis and David well, Gordon Well, look, Green. it's like begging for it. I feel like that is an immediate sign that you two have made a horror movie together. <laughs> <laughs> Brings yeah. you that close. Yeah. Wait, because hold it. Do that to me right now. Oh, but you don't have one. So. Uh, see, she won't do it. We haven't made a horror movie together. Can you fix this? We'll work on that. Halloween. We just need something sharp to cut the seam. Get it? Can we get Jamie wow. Lee Curtis a knife of some kind? <laughs> that's probably an unwise actually, actually, you know what? That's what I should come out with on QVC. A collection <laughs> of knives. Now, why someone has not come the, to me? The Curtis Cutlery. Would... <laughs> I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm telling you, QVC, wait for it. Would, It'll be soon. I would buy that in a second. Wouldn't you? <laughs> I love it. Well, because, like, that's your thing. When I look at you, I'm like... She gonna mess some people up. Yeah, it's how I wake up in the morning. <laughs> Just you, you know me so well. I love, I love that this version of Halloween, like what we've seen, is busting apart all these mythologies that we've lived with for so many years of our lives, and that you are sitting here at the center of this, like really taking charge of some shit and selling cutlery on QVC yes. in your own name. <laughs> yes. You know what, we actually, all we did, or all David and uh, Danny and Jeff did, is they just took scissors to the appendages uh -huh. and cut them free. It was not to huh. dismantle them or discredit them or come up with anything that was disparaging. In fact, we put a lot of like Easter egg homages to the other films too. Awesome. So. But that the idea was in order to tell a story that takes place 40 years later, you have to go to the original story and then jump it forward 40 years. And I think that was the brilliance of just their concept was let's honor those other films. People may have their favorites. We aren't going to um, focus on them. We're going to focus on one story that happened 40 years ago and tell a story of what happened to those people 40 years later. Well, that's what pumps me up as a fan because I feel like we've seen a lot of films recently that are made by fans who happen to also be really talented filmmakers. And then it just opens up a whole new world. So I'm reading like, this is the final chapter. Like everybody's making a big deal. They say final when I read about it, but is Who's it- Who's saying? I mean, I- Nobody's seen it. <laughs> I know, yeah. and I've read it on the See internet, which makes it true, yeah. question mark. Are we opening this up to a whole new kind of era of Michael Myers? A universe, if you will? I anything is possible. What we were trying to do is, is reestablish a group of characters in a, in a place, in a, in a series of events that I loved and had great nostalgia for, and, uh, and begin that exploration and dissection a little bit. Uh, we had a blast. From you know, from day one, and we're you know getting very close to being uh, finished with the film now. So, you know, who knows where we go from here? You got Jamie Lee Curtis finding tactile access holes <laughs> in your body now. Yeah, <laughs> my dream come true. Come on. Yeah. It's like, wow. do you think over the years that Laurie Strode has learned anything from Michael Myers besides maybe the obvious of violent tendencies? So, it, it, all jokes aside because I take it maybe way too seriously. And I, I think we, I mean, the approach was with a lot of integrity. This was not, nobody got paid. It was the same as the first movie. People who made this movie made it because they wanted to be a part of it. They wanted to work with David. They loved the script. They loved what we were trying to do. But the entire crew and the actors really went into it with a lot of integrity. So what I would say, it's a movie about trauma. It's a perfect movie for 2018. You guys were so prescient in understanding that for a, such a long time, Lori Strode has been the only person in Haddonfield, Illinois, saying, Michael Myers is coming back, Michael Myers is coming back, to the point where she lost her husband, she lost her child. 1978, there was no trauma help for her. She had to exist on her own, and what we find 40 years later is a woman who has been dogmatic, saying this man is coming back, this man is coming back, to the point where everybody thinks she's crazy. It's the boy who cried wolf. Right. It's the woman who cried Michael Myers. But the integrity of it is that all of that trauma is coming out in this movie because she has been preparing for this 
for 40 years. And I just get power from this trailer. Like when I watch you in this, I, I think a reimagining of Laurie Strode almost, or like just this continuation. It's the same girl without any mental health help for 40 years carrying the weight of this attack on her. I get, I get empowerment. And but you see, there is, you can only get empowerment because the other option is to be a victim and to be a victim means you have no life. At least she's fighting for the chance to have a life, to protect her family. And it's emotional. It yep. isn't, it, 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 with all the jokes aside, it, it's, it, it's deep. Yeah. And the trauma is deep. And I think the result and the, um, what would you say, uh, the confrontation yeah. that occurs. It's cathartic, kind of. Is, right. The idea is to take uh, a, very stressful situation that by today's standards is seemingly from a headline standpoint kind of insignificant but then take the the, the personal approach to something uh, that I do feel is is universal. Well because that's what makes it meaningful but that's what makes it scary. But that's what made the first movie meaningful was it was a small town these were regular girls and you focused on this one young girl mm -hmm. who had dreams of finding a boyfriend all of the natural vulnerabilities of a young girl and you put her in the path of Michael Myers and it naturally creates this incredible feeling of wanting to protect her, being terrified for her and now in the same breath you have my granddaughter who's the innocent, my daughter who wants nothing to do with me because all I was was this dogmatic woman and you bring Michael Myers back into it and it's again as terrifying and as cathartic as the original movie. Simple, clean, beautiful storytelling. And also Nick Castle I know. is back. <laughs> <laughs> and of course we've known, I mean I've known Nick for a very long time and he was John Carpenter's best friend who'd been in film school with him, was a director in his own right and John was like I need somebody to be the mask. I need somebody to be the shape. And Nick was like, okay. And, you know, Nick had two small children at the time and, you know, they're in a band together. So it was interesting to have him come back and reprise uh, the shape. Oh, it feels, feels good to us. <laughs> the ro like the royal us of the fans. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yes, I speak for all of us. No, We're so pumped. And the tra I don't even know, like, I get so excited when I think about the trailer with this seemingly like crazy chess game that's going on that's like has Michael Myers standing there and I'm like please don't show him the mask oh, <laughs> just showed him the mask like great how scared are we going to be him he'll yeah. be pretty scared yeah be very scared of me yeah <laughs> um yeah well that, that's the thing is, is is I like what Jamie said poor foundation of drama relatable characters add just enough humor to keep us with enough tension breaker and and give us some great graphic visuals and of course John Carpenter's doing the music so uh, that's going to be huge and 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 you know it's a childhood dream for me. Yeah.